Data security and proper file management is one of those I'll get to it later things and often just gets left in the back of the mind of every business owner until disaster strikes and you lose data. And by that stage, it's too late to do anything about it. In this video, I wanna share my simple guide to setting up Google shared drives in Google Workspace for easy and manageable file storage, even if you're a busy business owner. It's gonna help you to prevent data loss and keep your business running smoothly and safely. My name is Pete Moriarty and I've been helping small business owners with technology and data security, including file management and everything to do with Google Workspace for over 20 years. Now I've helped businesses all over the world and our channel and our business, IT Genius, help small business owners get their tech systemized, organized and scalable. Before we dive into how to set things up, I wanna talk about some of the common things that people get wrong when they're setting up their Google Drive because everybody seems to make the same mistakes. Now, many people will just jump into Drive and use their My Drive for sharing files. They'll open a document, the document will get placed in your My Drive, you work on the document and you hit the blue share button to share that with someone. Now, that obviously works for sharing and collaborating on a single document, but it starts to run into issues when you create that as a culture in your business that your team then follow. See, the problem the problem with creating and sharing files on an individual basis is the person who created that file is forever the owner of that file. And that means they forever have the ability to delete that file and therefore have the potential to be able to delete it from other people's Google Drive. Now we've seen this happen time and time again where a virtual assistant or a contractor is working for a business, maybe a, a marketing consultant or a graphic designer or a video editor, and they do a bunch of work inside of Google Drive. And they share that work back to the business that they're contracting for. But eventually, five years, 10 years down the track, they go and do a cleanup of the Google Drive, usually because they ran out of space, and they go and delete all of those old files that they did for their client. And those files, disappear from your business drive. The reason for that is even if you own a folder inside your My Drive, you may not necessarily own the files sitting within that folder. Now, the thing is that Google have let this kind of go on because someone needs to own the file so they can be counted for the storage that the file takes up. Shared Drives solves all of this because it basically says that files in a shared drive are owned by a company. You put a file in a shared drive after you've created it, and the company becomes the owner of that file. So if you have a contractor or someone outside the business working for you, they place a file on the shared drive, your company then owns the file. You've got to pay for the space, but that's okay because it's your file. And the same thing works for all of your staff as well. If you want to put a file into a shared drive as a staff member, well, it's going to ask you to transfer the permission and the ownership. And as you'll see shortly, there's some pretty cool permissions we can set on our shared drives to lock down and secure files that get placed into them. Now, you might be wondering, Peter, well, what's my drive for if we're using shared drives for everything? My drive, you can still use if you want to work on a document by yourself and you don't plan to share it with anybody. But my personal preferences and my recommendation always on this channel is that when you create a document, you automatically place it into the correct shared drive just so you can build that habit. And you want to enforce that with your team as well so you can get them into the habit too. So top level overview on shared drives. Think about your My Drive like your My Documents on a computer. That's your stuff. Shared drives are like the company drive. If you've ever had a small business server or if you've worked in corporate, you would have a G drive or an I drive or an S drive and that's where people would put the company stuff. Well, that's what shared drives is in a more virtual environment. If you're the business owner or the operations manager responsible for the Google Workspace account, you control who gets to put things into the shared drive and how things are accessed once they're in there. So if right now you're using My Drive for pretty much everything and you wanna to transition to shared drives, that's pretty straightforward. You just create the shared drives for your company and we've got guides on how to do that, including how to use group-based permissions. And then once you've done that, you would migrate or start dragging and dropping and moving your files from your My Drive into the shared drives. Now, you can run into some problems there. If you're not the owner of a file, you don't have the ability to move it into a shared drive. If you're a super administrator, you can move files that are within your company, but for the files that are owned by contractors who you work with or someone outside your business, well, you may need to either make a copy of that file into the shared drive or ask that person to place it in for you. Shared Drives is available on a business plan for Google Workspace. And previously they were limited to the business standard plan, but Google have allowed a basic version of Shared Drives now on the business starter plan. Our recommendation is always the business standard plan for all businesses regardless, because you get access to automatically recording your Google Meet recordings, they go into your Google Drive, and you get access to the more advanced features of Shared Drives, which I think are useful for pretty much any small business. 
All right, so let's get started organizing your drives. Now, the first thing I like to do is to think about the business in a few different logical ways. Now, when you're creating shared drives, you wanna think about the different areas of your business. And you may choose to keep that simple, have one area for executives, one area for your finance team, and one area for everyone in the company, right? To access everything. Or you might wanna get a bit advanced. If you've got more than 15 people in the business, maybe you create a shared drive for each functional area of the business one for sales, one for delivery, one for marketing, one for your accounts. You can choose to have as many shared drives as you like. There's no real theoretical limit. And Google gives you the ability to put as many files as you want in those shared drives. Performance can start to take a hit if you've got hundreds of thousands of files in one shared drive, but you don't have to worry too much about how much space is consumed because that's all just dictated by how much a total available space you've got in your Google Workspace account. Shared drives are based on the cloud and they're not gonna slow down based on the number of files that you've got in there. They're pretty robust and they're available from all kinds of different devices. You're most likely gonna to want to have different logical shared drives based on different groups of people who want access or how you want that shared drive to behave. Now, before we dive into next steps, remember that setting up Google Shared Drives doesn't have to be complicated. If you're not the kind of person who likes to read the instruction manual yourself, you can take advantage of our concierge service to have things done for you in your tech world. Now, if you're a small business owner anywhere in the world, IT Genius can help you get Google Drive set up, configure your shared drives, set up the right group permissions for your business, and even help you migrate data from within Google Workspace or external tools like OneDrive or Dropbox or somewhere sitting on a hard drive on your computer. If you'd like some help with your workspace account, check out our concierge program by clicking the link below this video. After we've created our individual drives, before we start adding people individually, I wanna implore you to have a go at group-based permissions. Now, these are pretty easy to set up. You can jump into the admin panel, go to your directory and then groups and start configuring groups with users for different people who need to access your resources. As I said earlier, you can choose to keep this simple, perhaps one group for executive, one for managers, one for the whole team or everyone, and then probably a separate group for contractors as well. And this honestly just makes it easier to onboard and off people inside the business. These groups can be used across different resources like for example, calendar or chat rooms, and it allows you to group your staff amongst the different levels of permissions that you wanna give them access to. And with one group, give someone access to a whole bunch of resources across Google Workspace, easily. We're gonna use these for our shared drives because it means that I don't have to worry about adding staff manually to the right shared drive. I just add them to the right group and they get access to not only shared drives, but everything else that I've shared with that group. Now, if you're looking for a deeper dive on how to get those permissions set up, I've got a number of dedicated videos on the channel. Check out how to manage Google Workspace permissions. And in that video, I've got detailed steps on setting up the groups and permissions from scratch. And you can make sure that everything in your business is secured right across those groups. But coming back to our shared drives, when you start sharing resources with an individual or a group, you're gonna have access to different access levels inside the shared drives. Now, I'll run through what they look like and what each of those does. Now, a manager is basically the top person. They can do absolutely everything, including adding and removing other users. This would really only be the IT person in your business or the business owner that has this permission. If you're a larger organization, as in more than 15 people, you might wanna set up a group for IT administrators inside Google Workspace and then add that group to this so you're not the single person who has access to it but this is one that you keep pretty locked down next up is content manager so this is someone who can put files in to a shared drive they can organize and move around the files but the only thing they can't do is add and remove different people from the shared drive this is the one that you would typically give to management level employees because they may be responsible for organizing the files in their particular area of the business but again you want to be limited because this person can delete data and after 30 days it disappears from the trash inside of Google Drive, unless you have an additional backup added to your Workspace account. Contributor is the most common option that we use. Contributor means that someone can place files in, they can edit files in the shared drive, but they can't delete anything. And I absolutely love this permission. It means that for our staff that are maybe newbies or they're working on sensitive client files, I can rest assured and sleep well at night that someone can create information or create IP in my business, but they can't delete it. Now, personally, I happen to be a bit of a pack rack, so this makes me happy that things are not gonna be accidentally deleted. But you can run into very real legal or potential commercial issues if you don't store data and save data inside your account. And for me, this is the perfect way to set that up. 
Additionally, if you're employing contractors who are outside the business, you wanna make sure that the work they create doesn't accidentally disappear when they clean up their Google Drive in the future. If they are contributing files to a shared drive, it's gonna ask them, do you want to change the permission of ownership to the shared drive? And once a contributor does that, it means that the company then owns the files and it's no longer able to be deleted by that person. Lastly, the commenting role and the viewing role are pretty self-explanatory. Someone can either comment or view the documents that are inside that team drive. We'll use that for folders like training where we just want someone to be able to view them, but we don't need them to edit or interact with anything else. My strong recommendation is for contractors or anyone else outside the business that you try and limit their access to either viewing or commenting access and not any more than that. So now you've got these set up, how do you make sure all of this works? Well, here's a couple of my best tips for someone who's been using this system for over 10 years now. Number one is avoid blue button sharing. Resist the urge to share files individually using the blue button. This can lead to accidental permission leaks and it just creates a culture in your business where people are sharing on individual documents rather than placing them in the correct folder structure. Now, Google Drive search is amazing and you can find pretty much any file anytime just by running a quick search. The challenge with that is it makes people a little bit lazy in organizing their data. And search works great for most of your day-to-day -day use in finding, discovering, and then being able to edit files. But it really falls down if you don't know what a file is called. That's why, until today, we still use folders. You've gotta have somewhere to put the stuff so it's got the right permissions, but also someone can find it if they don't know what a file is called and they're not gonna be able to find it via search. So if we avoid the blue button and always have the discipline of creating a file and then clicking the move button and moving it into a shared drive before we then share the file, presumably by copying the URL, then we're gonna have a much better time with our file management. Number two, a regular audit doesn't hurt. Every month or so, I would recommend you review the permissions of the groups and review the permissions of your shared drives just to make sure that everything's up to date. Now, my personal recommendation is that you don't ever share a shared drive with an individual, you only share it with groups. And that means your audit check is easy as glancing across all of the shared drives in your Google Drive and checking to see that it's only shared with groups and not any individuals. If something is shared with an individual, you can investigate and choose to update your permissions or your groups if you need to. Thirdly, a backup for Google Workspace is a good idea. I'm not gonna cover that in full in this video and you can check out some of the other videos on our channel covering backup for Workspace, but just in case data is deleted accidentally or on purpose by the wrong person, well, you wanna have a option to get it back that's outside of the Google ecosystem. Google recently changed, and by recent I mean in the last couple of years, the function of Google Drive's trash, and it no longer keeps those files longer than 30 days after you've deleted something, so you wanna make sure that they don't disappear into nothingness if the worst happens. If you found this guide helpful, leave me a comment down below and make sure you like and subscribe.